I was scared. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. We can work it out because that's what I did every single time because I was scared. And he told me not this time. A Florida woman accused of murdering her husband and burying his body under a fire pit in a concrete slab takes a stand in her own defense. He put his face or his foot on my face. Okay. Mashing it into the the patio, porch, okay. whatever you want to call it. Lori Shaver is accused in the 2015 shooting death of her husband, Michael Shaver, then pretending to be him in texts and social media messages to give the impression he was still alive. But Michael Shaver's body wasn't found until years later. According to authorities, in 2018, his remains were discovered three feet below ground under a concrete slab and fire pit that Lori installed in her backyard two years earlier. She has since remarried after Michael's death, now going by Lori Filmer. Lori wasn't arrested until September of 2020 when she was charged with second-degree murder and being an accessory after the fact. She's been out on bond while awaiting trial. Lori's defense claims her then eight-year-old daughter fired the gun, killing her father in an attempt to protect her mom. Her defense wanted to present evidence Lori's children witnessed years of physical abuse, including an alleged incident on the day Michael was last seen alive that led their daughter to shoot and kill her father. When Lori took the stand in her trial, she immediately became emotional, wiping away tears before telling the jury how she first met her then-husband, Michael. I met Michael... Um... Well, we started dating in seventh grade. We went, we lived in a very small town um, in Lawrence, New York. Our school was K through 12, 500 kids. Our graduating class was like 14, 18 kids. We went to kindergarten together. I met Michael in tech class when they actually did tech class um, in seventh grade. After the two were married, they moved from New York to Florida. But Lori explained cracks began to show quickly within their marriage, from being isolated from both sides of the family to physical abuse. What happened next in y'all's life? Um, there was a lot. <laughs> um, we, we just had each other. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. We just had each other. I was a single mom in a new place with no family, no friends. He was a pilot, he was gone all the time. There was no support from either family. Now we talked, we, we heard from family in this case of Mike's come in and they said, well, we haven't heard from him for this period of time or that period of time. Was he close with his family at all? No. Did you ever visit him? Stacy, yes. Did any of them ever visit your residence? Never. They, no, they didn't even come to the wedding. Okay. But when we were growing up through high school, we would go to Stacy's all the time. Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays. I knew Desiree. I knew Danny. And you know that. And every time we would go over there and meet, you and Mike used to always get together and talk about how your dad evaded the whole family. Okay. What was the next step in y'all's marriage? So from there, um, there was a lot of issues. A lot of issues. He was away, gone for over a week. I packed up Isabel, and we had flight privileges. We could fly for free. I packed her up, and when he was gone, took her to New York, where my family was, thinking I could get away, get support, file for a divorce. Everything was good. Rented a house. Everything was good. I was back working at MetLife in the office. My sister works there. She's actually the uh, operations manager now. She was, she's, she's a nurse. She started her way down low. She was actually the one that got me the job, told me that they were doing this mass hiring. Um, and now she's the operations manager of MetLife and, and Ariskany. 
So I packed Isabelle up. She was just a little over a year old. We went there. And um Where was Spike? Well, he was off on a business trip, but we had back then you used to have flying privileges. You could just is you were just on standby. As long as you could just get on the plane, you could fly anywhere you wanted to for free back then. Um so that's what I did. I got away. My sister was helping me. We got a house. We rented a house. Everything was per like, all right, this is going to work. I was seeking an attorney in, in New York, filing for divorce. My mom, I uh, went to, a, I started, I joined a gym, and I went to a spinning class one night. I came home that night. Um, my mom was watching Isabel, who was a baby. I went into the shower. When I came out, my mom was not there. Okay. I was greeted by a punch in the face. Excuse me. Okay. Let's let's limit it okay. without physical okay. description. I was greeted by Michael. Okay. Three weeks later. All right. I, I was out of work for three weeks. Okay. And I was, we were all back in Florida three weeks after that. Her defense attorney then laid out pictures showing Lori's previous bruises. The photos made Lori emotional as she recalled being physically abused in front of family at times. The defense then moved their questioning into her relationship with her daughter, Isabel, who Lori says was very protective. Isabel grew up really fast. She had to take care of Aiden when I was not able to. As a consequence of these events? Yeah. And even to this day, she still, I am not the person to, if you come at me with something, I don't have a comeback. I will shut down. And I will just retreat. She's not that person. She will get right in front of me. Whether we're at the gas station or grocery shopping. There, there used to be a time period where I could not even go into a grocery store by myself. Would... Were there events wherein... You were not free to leave the residence? Yes. Would anybody control your freedom of movement? Yes. My, <laughs> obviously I've gained weight over the years, but my eating was controlled. I had anorexia and bulimia. I probably the way this, now what I did with all four of my kids, but I literally reached for an Oreo one time and was thrown off the couch. She says she made several attempts to leave her husband and even filed protection orders against him. When the injunctions were filed, Lori says Michael was out of their home by that point. So they began seeing other people, one of which was Jeremy Townsend, also known as Jay. Then at some point in time, you met Jeremy Townsend, correct? Tell us how you met Jeremy, where you met Jeremy. I met Jeremy at the school. At the school? Yeah, not at the park. Okay. Um, he, he had a, like an opal color truck. I had a white truck. There was two lanes coming out. And uh, we were both there at the same time. It was the end of August. And uh, he rolled down the passenger window and handed me a sticky note. And I grabbed it. And it said, I know what you're, con what you're going through. I can help you. Call me. And he gave me his number. Why would he suggest that? I had marks on my face. There's d digital data 
that's been introduced of text, I believe. Does some of that contradict his statement here in court? Well, that's why I asked him, why did you lie to me? Pardon me? That's why I asked him in those texts that were introduced today, why did you lie to me? Why is that? Because I didn't. He was separated from his wife. And then I found out that he was now back together with her. <laughs> so I said, why did you lie to me? Why all of a sudden are you wearing your wedding ring again? Yes. I see. Now, just, did, did Jeremy come by the house often? Every day. Every day? Every day. Morning, night, what times? He would come by in the mornings. Well, initially, we would meet at the school. Um, he would drop his son off. I would, uh, like, when our relationship first started. Um, and I would have Isabella and Aiden. And, uh... We'd sit in the, we'd show up early and we'd sit in the school car line and he'd come back to the truck where I had my kids and we'd all just converse in the morning while we sat there and waited until school started. Sometimes Vanessa would come out and get Trent out of his truck early and take him in because she was a teacher there. And then he would leave, go off to work. He worked in, um, he did landscaping. He had a partnership landscaping business. A lot of our stories are very tough to tell, but what keeps us bringing you these stories is in part due to our sponsors. So I just want to take a moment now to thank our wonderful sponsor, and that's City Lips. As someone whose work is always on camera, I'm constantly having to touch up my makeup, especially reapply my lip gloss over and over again. And I really appreciate a glossy and plumpy look, so I turn to City Lips. City Lips is an all-in-one solution for dry lips, fine lines and wrinkles, and straw lines. It's formulated with clinically tested ingredients like hyaluronic acid for that perfect plumpy pout. And it's not just me who loves City Lips. Millions of women have tried them and the tubes are flying off the shelves. So snag one before it's too late and check out City Lips by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to citybeauty.com slash lcnews. Use the code LAW15 for 15% off. This is after her relationship with Jeremy, she and Michael try to give their relationship another shot, but things quickly soured. When asked about the incident leading up to Michael being shot and killed, Lori said the day started as normal for her and her kids, but noticed Michael was sitting out on the patio, and an argument between the two from there just escalated. I knew he was sitting out there. I could see him through the kitchen window out in the back patio. So I went out there, and we started talking. And it escalated. And I, I went to walk back in because this wasn't going anywhere and he was not leaving. And I opened the sliding glass door to go in. And when I did that, he took my phone and slammed it up against the sliding glass door. There was an imprint of my phone on that sliding glass door. He grabbed my arm pulled me down into his lap in the, the furthest chair that was I don't, I don't have a picture in front of me but the sliding glass door there was like a post and there was a uh, we had like a bistro table sitting there in front and on the, this further side I guess in front of the sliding glass door there was a chair so he had pulled me down in his lap he was holding on to me and uh, at that point, I was just trying to convince him, like, okay, 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 enough. We'll, we'll work it out. What's he saying to you during this, Lori? He's just, he's, I, I was talking at that point. I was scared. That's what I'm saying. Okay, 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 we can work it out. Because that's what I did every single time, because I was scared. And he told me not this time. Was he upset about anything in particular that you're aware of? Yes, he found out I was I had gotten pregnant. From Jay? Yes. Okay. So is he mentioning that in his discussion or or what? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean not at that time. Um we had uh, it was previously before he pulled me into his lap, but I mean he, he knew. Okay. 
So I was like, okay, 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 we'll work it out. Because at that point, I had already had the abortion. So are you facing the house or facing away from the house? Tell us your direction. I'm facing looking out to the back pasture. I'm, I'm on the back porch, but I'm not looking into the house. Okay. Now, he spins you around, and you're in the chair, I take it? I'm in his lap. He's holding me there. Okay. And then he pushed me to the ground. Okay. As he pushes you to the ground, does he do anything? After he pushed me to the ground, he was kicking me in the stomach. Okay. Presuming you were pregnant or something? Yeah, or and something? I had already told him I had, the, I had the abortion, and I was screaming at that point. Okay. Is he making any threats? to do any harm to you, any serious bodily harm? Yeah, I mean, he, he said not this time. He said I was not getting away. Okay. Not this time. I mean, we had been through so many events, but that, that's not the first time. I mean, he had pulled a gun out, me at Publix in Claremont. This was not okay, the first time. Okay, let's not talk about prior events, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so you're on the ground. And he's kicking you? In the stomach. Okay. Is he kicking you hard? Yes. Okay. Very hard. Is he no, making any... Up. Okay. Is he making any statements of any intent to kill you or anything of that nature? Yes. yes. Okay. Is he speaking in such a level that the children could hear this? Oh, yeah. We both were. Okay. I was screaming. What's the next thing you recall? The next thing I see is, I, I, I can't even say that I see her. I more or less heard it. And then I, I think I seen her. When you say her, who are you referring to? Isabel. What's Isabel do? Uh, she had fired a gunshot. Okay. Now, when Isabel fires mm -hmm. this gunshot, do you see where it lodged into Michael or what? I could not. Where are you after Isabel fires the gun? I'm still on the ground. And, and, and Michael. the next thing you recall? Um, the next thing I recall is seeing Jay, Jeremy, um, and hearing the gunshot at essentially at the same time. Is there much time that goes by between Isabel shooting the gun and Jay taking out our Jeremy? No. It felt like forever. I, I remember looking at her. Had you gotten off the ground? No. No. I had not. Michael was still sitting in the chair. And After Jay comes, you hear Jay discharge the firearm. And after Jay discharges the firearm, what do you hear next or observe next? Well, at that point, I started crawling away, but Michael fell forward out of the chair. Fell forward on the chair? Out of the chair. Okay. Was that after Jeremy shot or after Isabel shot? Jeremy. After Jeremy makes that shot and to Michael, what happens after that? He, I got up, we went into the house, we went into Isabel's room, and, um... Who has the gun at that point? I don't, I don't recall that he had the gun. I don't know. Okay, he, did you he see... He was Is the last one with the gun. Okay, did you see Isabel carrying it after that? No, no, okay. but I, it wasn't carried into her room where we were having a conversation. She said after the shooting, Jeremy told her to take the kids and get them out of the house, and he would take care of it. Where'd you take them? 
I, I took them to school. I wanted to get back home. I did not know what was going to happen after that, but I wanted to get the kids out. And the only place I had to take them was school. It wasn't that far away. So you take the kids to school, mm -hmm. come back to the house. Is Michael there? No. Is Jay there? No. Nope. No. And we had a conversation um, with Aiden. I remember that. He had obviously heard commotion. And um, he didn't know what happened didn't see it. He was in his room, which was at the further end of the, the house. And uh, I had just told him, your dad's gone away for a long, long time and insinuated that he was going to jail. Now, did you see any fresh dug holes on the property as you walked about it or moved about it beyond that point? No. When Jeremy, when Jeremy said, I'll take care of this, did you have any reason to believe that that body was on your property? No, never. There's no way he could have. I wasn't gone that long where he could have. Finding out the dimension? No. Mm -mm. He came back. It was probably about two in the afternoon. Now, did you know whether or not it is family had property elsewhere? Yes. Did you make any assumptions that it may have been taken yes. somewhere else? And I had questioned him about that. They had 30 acres. He said five. He had told me 30 acres. I don't know whether that what's true or what's not anymore. But I was told they had 30 acres. I asked him that. After that event, what happened to your relationship with Jeremy? It ended. I had found out, I, I mean, I became pregnant. We were talking about getting engaged. We went and looked at houses. And then I find out that he's now trying to work it out with his wife. And then that happened. And I was so overwhelmed at that point. No. I ended it. She said after she never mentioned the shooting to anyone, but everything would change for Lori when Michael's remains were discovered under the concrete slab that was used for the construction of her fire pit. And eventually this fire pit gets dug, correct? Or had been dug, prepped for a duck pond, correct? They didn't dig anymore. Yeah, it had been dug out, my understanding, for a duck pond, correct? Yeah, previously. That was even previous to Jeremy. Yeah. And y'all abandoned that attempt or effort? Yes. So you move on. I mean, it was just like, it was just an outline. We didn't even dig deep into it. Okay. So Travis comes along, some time passes, and y'all elect to put the uh, patio there. Yeah, that was the original plan. Okay. You'd broken up with Travis. Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, excuse me, I'm, I apologize. You've broken up with Jeremy. Now, Wilma next door testified that they detected an odor about your property. Was there any odor floating about on your property? No. I mean, we had rescued one pig. We got another, a wild male and female. They had babies. And... Robert Seha and his wife, they had horses. They also had dogs. They were renting the back property to keep some of their horses. And they had dogs. And there, there was a few occasions where the dogs had come up and with the little pigs. It's not a pretty sight. Um, so I don't know if that's what she was smelling. But, and uh, with the birds, like I said, with 400 birds. Um, we used to slaughter them. I used to cut the chicken meat. Like we had ducks, guinea, guinea fowl, quail. We had tons. 
we used to, I had a license to sell. Um, we sold to a restaurant in Winter Garden. There, there was an obvious odor. Would you have posted photographs on the internet or on social media? Absolutely not. If you had knowledge that there's a body underneath Absolutely there? Not. If I knew, everything would have changed, everything that occurred. The only reason why we laid the patio when we did was because we were trying to have this huge birthday party for Isabel. Robert Seha and his wife, they had the horses, and we invited essentially everybody from Pine Ridge <laughs> to the house. Um, and they were, were gonna have the horses going through the backyard and they, the kids could do hand printing and stuff on them. So we did that. So we were just trying to level everything out, make it look nice, have a gathering place. Th that's all that it was. That's why it, it wasn't placed until right before her birthday in September. Place for people to stand and sit on. Yeah, it was just to level the ground out. I mean, it was sitting in the shed, had been sitting there for since the beginning of the year. We just decided that was like the right time to do it. You know, there's been talk about and documents introduced regarding this social media, Facebook, etc. Do you know who posted some of those images, any of those images? On my there's there's images from your account, Michael's account, other accounts. Did Jay have access to social media at your house? Yes. Oh, a lot of people did. We lived in everybody had access to the Wi Fi password. It was America One. Scott A. Matuccio, Jay, Frank, Wilma, everybody. You could not be at that house without being connected to Wi Fi if you wanted to have connection to anything. We kept the password straight. It was America One. Everybody knew it. I posted those things on my Facebook. I did not post those things to Michael's Facebook. Well, on the stand, she denied shooting Michael, saying had it not been for her daughter Isabel or even Jeremy being there that morning, she might not be alive today. Lori, have you testified from your heart the truth of these events? Have I left anything out that you feel that you need to tell the juries to clarify any issues that you've spoken of at this stage? I mean, there's a, a lot I would like to get out. Okay, direct me to the topic. I know we can't go into the detail of these events, though. Okay. Aside from that, is there anything else? Michael had a lot of anger. Uh, no, please. Sustained. Well, we've spoken about his yes. emotional attitude. Correct. But we can't get really I know. I know. the events that we spoke. Objection, Your Honor. This isn't a question. All right, sustained. So I'm just correct her so that we don't go okay. down that path. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Please ask a question okay. if you wish. So, aside from the issues that we've spoken about, the temperament and the disposition, in the atmosphere and all the matters that we've discussed. Is there anything else that you feel that the jury should know? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for narrative. It's not a question. Sustained. Please ask a specific okay. question. Is there a topic that we have not discussed? No, nothing that I'm going to be able to okay. talk about at this time. All right. Thank you, Judge. When it came time for her cross-examination, the prosecutor pressed her on the timeline she had while on the stand. The biggest question I have for you, because you didn't mention it once in your entire story, is when did your husband get killed? The exact date, I cannot recall. It was beginning of May of 2016. It was not November. You were saying that you met... Jeremy Townsend in August of 2015. Yes, at the end of August. 
and that he passed you some sort of post-it note. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes? yes. All right. And you had uh, talked about because you had marks on your face or something like that. Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Now, according to you, Michael Shaver had left the residence in November of 2015, correct? Your residence. Yes. All right. I had kicked him out. All right. And, well, I thought that you were the type of person that would just shut down and retreat and couldn't confront anybody. That was your words, right? No, I said that I'm not the type of person where if you come at me and say something, like belittling me or anything like that, I shut down and, and retreat. I, I'm not confrontational. All right. And that was in the context of me and my daughter. But you, can't, but you were confrontational with Mike Shaver. Yeah, I told him to get out because he okay. knew that if, if I called the cops, and he, he would definitely be kicked out, be, and he would be picked up. So, All yes, right. it was very pretty much easy to get him out. Let's try to figure out this timeline then. In September of 2014, he was arrested for a domestic incident that involved him, correct? Correct. And that is when he went to the airport hangar, correct, where he started living? Yes. All right. Did he move back into the house after that? Yes. All right. When did that happen? I don't know the exact time. Yeah. It was. Long. How long had it he? It wasn't. Gone? He had been gone over a year. All right. So sometime in 2015. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, probably summer of 2015. Okay. So, if the arrest was in September of 2014, approximately six to eight months that he was gone? No, it was greater than that because he had finished his, finished his, his probation period. Okay. And in that incident, um, the he also suffered injuries, correct? Yes. Because you hit him over the head with a gun, correct? Well, he had the gun pointed at my head, and at that point, I, I was done. I thought I was giving up at that point. I had nothing left in, in me until I seen my kids come out and start screaming. And as soon as I seen them, I took and slammed that gun into his head. Okay. Have you ever told anyone that he was not at fault for that incident and it was actually you? No. Okay. Did you throw a vase of flowers into the sliding glass door and break that? I did. Can we approach, please? Five heart, please. During that incident, did you throw a vase breaking the sliding glass door? Okay. And you also broke objects in the bathroom, correct? No, I did not. Okay. There's pictures of the sliding glass door uh, from that incident. You've seen those, correct? Yes. And other, other items in the house that were broken, correct? Correct. Uh, along, with, uh, along with the injuries to you and the uh, injuries to uh, Mr. Shaver. The only injury that I was aware of was to his head. Okay. And his pants were torn, correct? Because he, he would hold my keys in his, his pants and would not let me leave the residence. So after I hit him in the head, pushed the gun into his head, I had to reach into his pocket and grab my truck keys so that I could evade the property with my children and okay. get to safety. Now, after he left in November of 2015, Okay. Got it straight now? Okay. After he left in November of 2015, was this incident, uh, which ultimately led to his death, the first time that he came back? Yes, it was. Okay. So, then in August, I'm sorry, you're saying you, you actually started a relationship with, with Jeremy Tallison in August of 2015? <laughs> Talking in August, and I, Michael was still at the residence. Okay, so after November of 2015, he does not come back to the house. Correct. Uh, so that check that was sent to him and deposited in his account, uh, he would not have received, correct? I don't know. He got his mail. How did he get his mail if he wasn't at the house? The, the mailbox was not at my residence. It was at the end of the road. Okay. So after he left in November of 2015, are you saying that he would just come by every day to pick up his mail? I don't know what he did. 
Did you ever notice any meal missing? How would I know if it was missing? Did you ever notice any of your stuff missing? No. Did, Did he you ever notice any mail coming for Mike, Michael Shaver to that address after he left? Yes, a, a few things. What would you do with that in order to get it to him? I would take it back to the post office and do return mail, no longer at this address. Where was it going? I don't know. Where was he? I don't know. I assumed at the, probably he, back at the hangar. If he left in November of 2015 and went to go live at the hangar, why would he quit his job at Disney? Because there was a sexual harassment charge against him. Okay. Did, you've seen the, you heard that his supervisor came in and, and said there was, there was no such thing and there's nothing in those records, correct? Oh, I did. Right. I heard that. Are you saying that Disney falsified those records? The sexual harassment complaint filed against him came directly from Michael's mouth. Well, under Cross, Lori denied using Michael's social media accounts, but admitted his accounts were open on the different devices, easily accessible in the house. When asked about her timeline of putting in the fire pit, she said the area that was dug out to make way for it was a decision she made with Jeremy. When law enforcement came and asked you about the whereabouts of your husband, the, you were not truthful with them, correct? Oh, I didn't know where he went. Mm -hmm. the last, I you know what happened to him, correct? Yeah. All right, you didn't tell him that, correct? The Walmart uh, purchase uh, that was on uh, your husband's bank account, you did that, correct? I don't recall doing that. That was sent to your house with your name on it, correct? Yeah. All right. I, I don't recall like the exact parameters around it or what I bought or anything like that. So this event happens in May of 2016, correct? Say yes? Yes. Your relationship with Jeremy Townsend and very tumultuously in May of 2016, correct? Mm -hmm. Say yes? Yes. And your relationship with Travis Filmer then begins in May of 2016, so correct? He came over at the end of May. Yeah. And you were actually in, uh, engaged to him in July of 2016, correct? In April of 2016, Rebecca Urbanowski was living with you, correct? Correct. Okay. And the fire pit itself was built in March of 2016? I, I, I guess so. I don't That's when you posted it, right? Yeah. And then how big was your property? Five acres. And out of all of that land, you just happened to choose the area where your dead husband's body was found to put that cement slab. That's basically what you're saying here, correct? No, because I did not know his body was there. It went there because that area was already dug out. Quite a coincidence, you'd agree, correct? No, not necessarily. Not if you realize the whole parameters of what came first and how that all transpired. Like I well, said, that was supposed – that was – something that Jeremy and I had originally talked about doing because I had gotten rid of the animals and we already we had the fire pit and we were talking about wanting to I mean he's he he's the it was his suggestion to put in concrete so the March 2016 is when you put that fire pit in and two months later is when your husband is killed on your property correct yes but the concrete was not poured until September Correct, by, by you and your now husband. But I had no knowledge that he was under there. If I was trying to cover him up, why would I do that so many months later? And only... I haven't asked you a question, ma'am. When Lori was asked why her daughter didn't just call 911 after the shooting, she says because she didn't have a phone. How old was your daughter at this point? Seven. And is there a reason why you never taught your daughter how to call, dial 911? I mean, there were, we just had cell phones. We didn't have a landline. She knew how to dial 911, but I, like I said, I had my cell phone on me. The security system that we had, she would have not have been able to reach. It was above the keys where the door was. Well, when, when she said, I didn't know how to call 911, I'm asking why you wouldn't have taught her. I did teach her how to call 911, but she didn't have a phone. Okay. 
Now, your testimony is that she shot him, correct? Yes. And uh, at that point, uh, that you were able to get out from underneath Mr. Shaver, correct? I did not crawl away until he was falling to the ground. After she shot him, I was still looking at her, like, still comprehending everything that was happening. I wasn't too yet because he had been, had his foot on my face, smushing it into the ground. It took me, I mean, it wasn't that long, but it took me a little bit to kind of comprehend what was occurring. And he then- certainly didn't get up after being shot, correct? Hmm. He certainly didn't get up out of the chair after being shot, correct? No, not until, no, no. The, the, after the second shot, he fell forward. But in his final line of questioning, the prosecutor pressed Lori on why Michael's communication continued from her IP address after he was already dead. When Mike left, he left his vehicle, correct? The, you're talking about the, the black car. No, I'm talking about he had a vehicle and he left it behind, correct? His black car had been sitting there for a while. He had a bent rim in the air, in the tire, could not stay inflated. So he was driving my truck back and forth to work. Right. My question was, when he left and moved out, he left his car, correct? And he left everything that he had that had any sort of value that could be sold, correct? His guns, he his took tools, stuff, yeah. his ATV, left all that behind. Well, all the tools that were in the shed were of no use to him. They were like old tools and stuff like that and it wasn't an ATV. My question was, he left the stuff behind, stuff that he could have sold, correct? Correct. The, he stopped going to work and lost his job because of it, correct? I was not aware of that at that time. So he lost his ability to make any money, correct? I was not aware of that at that time. Prior to November of 2015, he would call you uh, at, on, on using the phone frequently, correct? Yes, because he was back in the house and we were working things, trying to work things out. After November of 2015, there is absolutely no calls to you after that November 7th, 2015, correct? I don't recall. There's not a single call uh, to you, to the children, anything, correct? There's no activity on his bank other than uh, withdrawals from the ATM in Claremont where you lived, correct? I wouldn't know that. November 2015, he just vanishes off the face of the earth. No one can account for him, correct? I don't believe that that's true. But there is, you've definitely not had any contact with him in any way until he shows up someday Occurs, correct? No, he showed up prior to May. I at asked at you, my property, but he was already causing trouble prior to that, which fits within his history of doing this. My question, my question to you previously was, after you kicked him out in November of 2015, and prior to him coming up the day that he was killed, I asked you, did he ever come, have any contact with you? You said no, correct? Not physically, correct, but calls and stuff like that yes calls Next. his threats stuff like that you've seen the, you saw the phone records which show okay. absolutely no Text, calls Facebook from him messages. after november 7th was, correct let her answer the question please all right he was allow the witness to finish thank you he was communicating with jeremy i believe he had sent me text he had sent me a nasty text prior to that telling me i was just like my mom something to that effect, he was communicating. From your IP address? I don't know that that's my IP address. How can you verify that? Because it's the same IP address that your account that you says you used posted on as well. Okay, how do we know that he didn't post on my face or log into my Facebook? So what vehicle 
the day that he showed up in May of 2016, what vehicle did you use to get to your house that day? What vehicle was in your yard that you didn't recognize that day? In May? Yes. So he gets walked? He just showed up without a vehicle in your house on the back porch. I was not paying attention to that. Nothing further, Judge. There was no redirect examination by Lori's attorney, and she was off the witness stand. With no other witnesses to call in her defense, the defense rested their case. And on Friday, the jury deliberated for just less than four hours before finding Lori Shaver guilty of second-degree murder. Her sentencing is scheduled for November 25th. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.